Antarctica, one of the world's most mysterious continents, home to one of the largest and driest deserts on the planet, covering an area of around 5.5 million square miles. If there was anywhere on Earth where crashed, preserved, ancient alien technologies could still be found, it would be here. An untouched landscape, which may in all possibility be the final resting place as of yet unretrieved relics, which may have been stranded there to this day. The deep sea which surrounds Antarctica, for example, are some of the most difficult and inhospitable environments to explore anywhere. Far away from the modern world, deep within the frigid, pitch-black waters of this massive chunk of ice, where our next discovery was miraculously made. An out-of-place artifact which is still resting at the bottom of this sea. Known as the Eltanen Antenna, if it wasn't for the brute strength of the nearly 2,000-ton ice-breaking vessel known as the Eltanen, we may never have found it. Initially a U.S. Navy cargo-carrying icebreaker, in 1962, she was reclassified as an oceanographic research ship and became the world's first dedicated Antarctic research vessel. On the 29th of August 1964, while collecting sample cores and photographing the seabed west of Cape Horn, the Altanen took the first known photograph of the antenna at a depth of nearly 4,000 meters. The first public mention of the unusual object would not surface for several months. A news item, which appeared in the New Zealand Herald on 5 December 1964, under the heading, Puzzle Picture from the Seabed, would briefly disclose the discovery, yet any further exploratory missions, if indeed there has been any, have been operating in secret. Similar to the Baltic Sea anomaly, yet positioned at a far deeper depth, in an extremely remote, cold, and lonely part of our world, it too shows all the hallmarks of an artificially created object. The question is, what could it be? And more importantly, what was or is its function? In 1968, author Brad Steiger wrote an article for Saga magazine in which he claimed that the Altanen had in fact photographed, quote, an astonishing piece of machinery, very much like the cross between a TV antenna and a telemetry antenna. End quote. It is interesting to note that the Black Knight satellite, an anomalous object which is in a polar orbit, has been declared by numerous investigators throughout history as an artificial alien satellite, and with what appears to be an enormous alien antenna resting on the Antarctic seafloor. Is it possible that the two are connected? Or possibly in communication with each other? In 2003, Tom DeMary, a researcher in underwater acoustics contacted oceanographer A.F. Amos, a member of the Altanen's crew in the 1960s, in an effort to debunk any theory involving artificial design. In turn, Amos referred to Mary to the 1971 book The Face of the Deep by Bruce C. Heason and Charles D. Hollister. It seems Hollister had already attempted to identify the mysterious object as a carnivorous sea sponge. However, these attempts to discredit any unusual hypothesis was solely based on the same photographs we are privileged to. Further photographic exploration of the object, if undertaken, has been done in complete isolation from the public. What is the Altanen antenna? A mere sea sponge? An actual alien antenna? Whatever it is, it seems certain fields of study would like you to believe it's natural regardless of whether confirmation of such claims was made, we always find this highly compelling. Lake Titicaca This familiar named lake is located deep within the Andes. Now sliced in two by the borders of Bolivia and Peru, it is not only the largest lake in South America, but it is also undoubtedly the most important historically that can be found anywhere on Earth. Many tales have surfaced over the years, involving submerged citadels, mountains of gold relics, and vast ancient ruins scattered across the lake bed. Stories of amateur archaeologists becoming very wealthy from astonishing yet not publicly disclosed discoveries which lay beneath the waves. We found 2,000 objects and fragments, declared Christophe Delarere, 
a Belgian archaeologist at a ceremony in La Paz. According to Christoph, divers from his team found the objects more than 7 meters underwater off the coast of the Island of the Sun. These included 31 large golden relics. Archaeologists think these discoveries are just the beginning of something far greater, and for good reason. As time goes on, claims made a long time ago begin to appear more and more likely. According to Colonel John Blashford Snells, a notorious explorer, his extensive explorations of the lake, the surrounding ancient culture, and his resulting research, the ancient city of Tiwanaku, very near the lake shores, copied their original building knowledge from the scientists of the mysterious and legendary lost city of Atlantis. Interestingly, ancient Incan legend also corroborates his conclusions, stating that the mythical founders of their amazing empire did indeed once emerge from the lake's waters. The lake was considered the center of the cosmos by the Incan people, and they also somehow knew its shape, something we have only been able to achieve from a very high altitude. Ancient Inca legends tell that after a great flood, the creator god Viracocha emerged from Lake Titicaca. It's stated that he created, though this more than likely means they believe he restored the sun, moon, and stars. Viracocha was fair-skinned and long beard. He brought a great culture to the ancient peoples of South America. The 16th century Spanish chronicler Pedro Sarmiento de Gamboa recorded in his Historica de los Incas a tale about Manco Capac, the first Inca. According to Inca mythology, the Inca are the direct descendants of a mythical first Inca, named Manco Capac, who emerged from one of the three openings in the mountain Tambotoco, located 33 kilometers to the south of Cusco, Peru. Manco Capac is said to have created the Incan civilization through Varacocha. Even though his figure is mentioned in several chronicles, his actual existence remains unclear. Could this original and possibly vast ancient culture still be resting upon the bottom of Lake Titicaca? Did something catastrophic occur in our very distant past which filled this lake, once a large fertile valley, filled with what we have all become familiar as the lost city of Atlantis? On the 30th of July 1967, a group of seven sponge divers were exploring the bottom of Rock Lake within Wisconsin. What they found, however, is more precious than sponge or indeed golden relics. They would make a discovery so perplexing, some specialists are still struggling to explain it to this day. One of the divers, John Kennedy, stumbled across a large triangular rock formation near the middle of the lake, a structure which towered up from the deep, almost breaching the surface. He estimated that the structure which still existed above the mud was around 20 feet in diameter and around 40 feet from the edge of the lake. John collected several small fragments from around the structure, specimens which would later aid in collaborating their claims. Although rumors of an ancient pyramid existing in the lake had circulated since the 1930s, this was the first time in modern history that evidence had successfully been retrieved. It must be noted, Rock Lake is extremely ancient, and the area that is said to house an ancient pyramid has remained submerged for well over 10,000 years. Due to this geological fact, if it were not for John's physical evidence, the site may have been successfully overlooked by mainstream archaeology. Heated debate regarding John's and other claims from the 30s now raged on for several years, many mainstream archaeologists predictably rejecting the premise that a pyramid of over 10,000 years of age is resting, or more precisely, hiding, at the bottom of Rock Lake. They claim some enormous structures lay there. Native American legend records that they were built by an ancient peoples who were driven away during a flood. Although evidence was mounting, skeptics continued to insist that those involved were mistaken. It took a flight by aerial photographer Jack Latornio to silence such rhetoric. According to mainstream academia, the site simply shouldn't exist. Yet it does. It is another valuable relic of our past, which tell of a history drenched in antiquity. A history we are slowly unraveling. 
Divers from oil companies located within the North Sea have been discovering the remains of a drowned ancient city, which once spanned from the UK all the way to Denmark. An ancient city so massive its suspected population has been estimated well into the tens of thousands. A team of climatologists, archaeologists, and geophysicists have now successfully mapped the area, which has revealed just how vast and expansive this once lost land once was. Many specialists are now claiming this was once the real heartland of Europe. This enormous civilization is now believed to have dated back to some 8,000 years ago, and that the landmass was submerged over a period of several thousand years, a submersion which began some 20,000 years prior. Dr. Richard Bates of the Department of Earth Sciences at St. Andrews, who organized the Drowned Landscapes exhibit, covering the finds within the UK, says the data reveals the human story behind Doggerland, a now submerged city of the North Sea that was once larger than many modern European countries. Could these discoveries reveal Doggerland as the real lost city of Atlantis? Several hypotheses have placed the sunken island of Atlantis within modern Northern Europe, most noted among such researchers is Olaus Rudbeck, who suspected that Doggerland, as well as a Viking Bergen Island, which is thought to have been flooded by a mega tsunami following the Storega slide in 6100 BC, is the real location of Atlantis, a proposition he put forward all the way back in the 1600s. Some have proposed the Celtic Shelf as a possible location, and that there is certainly links to Ireland. Many places have been put forward for the possible location of the sunken city throughout the years, yet none have revealed ruins worthy of such claims, many of these areas being too small to have housed such an enormous city. Doggerland, however, fits the bill. Not only could it turn out to be the largest ancient civilization found on Earth, but it also rests in a possible location based on historical research for the city of Atlantis. It was submerged at one point in its history, and it is revealing astonishing ruins of a once great and presently unknown civilization. Dr. Bates, a geophysicist, said Doggerland was the real heartland of Europe until sea levels rose to give us the UK coastline of today. We have speculated for years on the lost land's existence, from bones dredged by fishermen all over the North Sea, but it's only since working with oil companies in the last few years that we've been able to recreate what this lost land looked like. When the data was first being processed, I thought it unlikely to give us any useful information. However, as more area was covered, it revealed a vast and complex landscape. We have now been able to model its flora and fauna, build up a picture of the ancient people that lived there, and begin to understand some of the dramatic events that subsequently changed the land, including the sea rising and a devastating tsunami. The research project is a collaboration between St. Andrews and the Universities of Aberdeen, Birmingham, Dundee, and Wales Trinity St. David. I will keep you posted on their future discoveries. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. The Bimini Road, sometimes called the Bimini Wall, is an underwater rock formation near North Bimini Island within the Bahamas. This ancient formation has caused a number of heated debates between academically funded scientific individuals and keen self-funded enthusiasts. The road is nearly a kilometer long and is composed of rectangular limestone blocks. Dr. Eugene Shin, who was originally tasked with investigating the wall, initially found and conveyed compelling details discovered during his dives. The problem, however, just like the many other currently inexplicable artifacts we often share on our channel, if this wall was ever officially confirmed as indeed artificial, it would contradict currently attested theories regarding the timeline of advanced human civilization. The fact that sea levels submerged the wall over 10,000 years ago, a geologically undeniability means that if it was ever academically authenticated as man-made, it would directly contradict that already supposedly established. Therefore, predictably, after Shin's initial funded research was concluded, he changed data to make it appear as though he had merely discovered there by humans. Greg Little, it seems, has encountered that which we continue to fight on a daily basis. Quote, all contradictions to their beliefs are probably perceived as a direct threat to them professionally and psychologically. The long history of science has countless examples of widely held beliefs 
that were proven wrong by research. But even in the face of incontrovertible proof that these beliefs were wrong, many so-called scientists refused to accept the new evidence." End quote. In his introduction, within his detailed analysis of the site, and indeed the academic fallacies therein, he states, quote, in 1968, a 1,600-foot-long J-shaped formation of stone blocks was reportedly discovered about one mile off the west coast of North Bimini by a Miami-based biologist, Dr. J. Manson Valentine. The formation was initially thought to resemble a collapsed wall or a road. Media coverage speculated that the site was associated with Atlantis, and sensationalized reports about the formation were widely disseminated. Shortly thereafter, four geologists asserted that the formation was nothing but natural limestone. Most archaeologists and geologists have accepted the four geologists' claims without question. However, an inspection of the site shows that the skeptics' most important claims about the formation are inaccurate and other well-known archaeologists appear to have participated in the hoax as co-authors. Paradoxically, these co-authors alleged in several articles that a hoax had been perpetrated at Bimini by others. It is demonstrated herein that USGS geologist Eugene Shin and archaeologist Marshall McCusick published a series of articles wherein they presented false and misleading. End quote. It is a reality we regularly encounter, yet thankfully, one, more and more people are beginning to become aware of. We implore you to read his research. A link is added in the description. Who built the Bimini Road over 10,000 years ago? How did they build it? Where does it lead? It is undoubtedly highly compelling. Hey guys, so recently first rank captain Vladimir Prokhodko the chairman of Russian Public Research Organization for Underwater Studies has publicly spoken in regards to Russia, the US, and China spending billions in space, when maybe they should be spending the money deep in the sea, under the glistening polar ice caps, where he claims gigantic alien machines are hidden. And he's not the only one. Since World War II, whistleblowers from governmental bodies all over the world have been lifting the lid in regards to the fact that alien crafts are being tracked traveling from the top of the planet to the bottom, within our oceans and above. During the naval operation known as Deep Freeze, men aboard a Russian icebreaker would later testify to witnessing a craft surge through 10-foot thick ice, flinging huge chunks in all directions, a silver vessel then shooting off into the atmosphere. Dr. Rubens Dizviela, a famous Arctic explorer, was among those who testified to witnessing the terrifying event. Upon exiting the ice-cold waters, he stated that steam erupted from the body of the craft, indicating the huge amount of energy these mysterious USOs possess. In 1997, Prikodko said, Billingsgausen Depression, near the Antarctic area, was examined by the Australian Army at a depth of over 6 kilometers, where cameras recorded strange oval objects which emitted an intense interior light. The film was reviewed by experts from the Royal Institute of Oceanology. Their conclusions were that the structures were of artificial origin. Russian naval vessels also report often tracking submerged dishes, traveling in excess of 150 knots or 280 miles per hour underwater. Former USSR Captain Vladimir Azaza, head of the navigational section of the Oceanographic Commission said when questioned that about 50% of encounters with UFOs are connected with the oceans and 15% are connected with lakes, making a huge portion of close encounters in the form of unidentified submerged objects rather than flying. What these mysterious events are caused by or indeed what the mysterious craft are beneath the ice cap remains a closely guarded secret, with only handfuls of whistleblowers ever coming forward. Yet they all stress the same thing, that we are not alone on this planet. There are countless submerged and very ancient cities dotted across the oceans of our Earth. Many of these cities all but forgotten until their rediscoveries within the modern era. When attempting to locate these mysterious places, it is beneficial for one to be aware of past sea levels. This, of course, can make the task of locating these submerged cities an awful lot easier. 
The main consensus is that world sea levels have largely stayed the same since the arrival of Homo sapiens, only really dipping or rising by around 120 meters across the Earth. When discussing these finds, you will, on all but a few exceptions, find yourself within these specific regions. One of the more interesting exceptions to this rule has to be the underwater city which was discovered just off the coast of Cuba a few years ago, a submerged city which sits over 700 meters below the waves. This depth, of course, being far below that which has experienced a breach over the past hundred or so thousand years. A theory that the landmass once rested upon the surface, subsequently being sunk by tectonic activities, was argued. Yet since its exploration as a possibility, it has been found to have not been the case. The results of this investigation strongly indicating that this city and its accompanying landmass somehow remained under the waves for more than a hundred thousand years. Greenville Draper of Florida's International University concluded that it was highly unlikely that such a tectonic event could have occurred, quoted as saying, nothing of this magnitude has been reported ever before, especially from the Mediterranean. Draper's, among many others' analysis, has of course come to conclusions. Conclusions which thankfully appear honest, making them extremely controversial, yet as with other fields of study in life, they are reluctant to reveal the implications of such conclusions. For example, if the research is correct, and judging by the extremely capable people tasked with this undertaking, there is no reason to suspect it is not, then this submerged city has remained submerged for over a hundred thousand years. This gives us two possible alternatives. One that the city predates the arrival of developed man on Earth, according to academically accepted timelines, or two, it reinforces our ever-growing accusations here at Mystery History of a past here on Earth which is unimaginably more ancient than we have been led to believe, a human society which has flourished and regressed on no less than three occasions. It could, of course, be both. There is a possibility that this ancient city was indeed built submerged under the waves by a once highly advanced civilization of Homo sapiens. Yet a more likely scenario, of course, would be that this ancient city was constructed at a time when the Caribbean Sea was a dry basin, and as the sea began to form, it was subsequently submerged. Yet, alas, modern academia readily rejects such a hypothesis. So, if we do not accept this as a likely possibility, then we must conclude that a primitive ancient culture, with primitive stone tools, and certainly no diving equipment, were somehow responsible for the construction of this submerged city, complete with enormous pyramids, on a foundation resting over 700 meters beneath the Caribbean Sea.